I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis. Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. Basketball promotes Coach from Within. Auburn football dominated at home while other Tiger sports returned home. This and more Sports Night in Auburn. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kennedy McKnight. And I'm Hayden Desmond. Thank you for joining us on Sports Night in Auburn. Last week, Auburn Basketball Associate Head Coach Chuck Person was arrested due to a federal investigation involving a bribery scheme. Person has been suspended without pay, leaving an opening in the coaching staff. On October 3rd, Bruce Pearl announced that Chad Pruitt has been promoted to interim assistant coach. Pruitt was the director of operations for Auburn basketball. Pearl said the move is temporary, but could last a while. Auburn football returned home for SEC play. Eagle Eye Sports' Casey Cooper has your game recap. The number 13 Tigers going up against the 24th ranked Bulldogs. Auburn striking first with a touchdown. Mississippi State would try to respond. No luck. If you think that was a pick six, look again. The ruling on the field was reversed, and Mississippi State settled with the field goal. And from there, the Auburn offense stole the show. Auburn went on to score six more touchdowns. A beautiful pass from Stidham to Kyle Davis. Stidham showing off his arm in this game. That pass would set up Carrion Johnson to go over the top for a touchdown. He had three total that night. My goal was just being better than I was the week before. And I think I was. I think I was better than the week before. Last week, I'm not sure if I would have got that opportunity to run that many yards. So, just got to get better. Mississippi State trying to put something up before halftime. They would go in trailing Auburn 21-10. to However, the Bulldogs could not find a spark in the second half to get the offense going. The Auburn defense kept Mississippi State out of the end zone in the entire second half. Backup quarterback Malik Willis putting the icing on the cake to finish out the game. The guys are making plays. Our receivers are growing up, and, and they're making plays uh, down the field. Um, and I think that this is kind of all starting to come together. So overall, we got off to a good start, and, and we got off to a good start. Our crowd got into it. Our crowd was unbelievable. I think we had seven false starts, and I've said this before. I think this is the best home field advantage there is in college football. It is also worth noting that Jared Stidham and Nick Coe received SEC honors this week for their play against the Bulldogs. Well, Jared Stidham, he did pretty good. He had a couple good passing touchdowns. Carryon Johnson did good on the offensive side of the ball, but we have to talk about the defense. They are the only defense in the country to hold every team they played to 14 points or less this season. That defense was amazing. I think our defense is the reason why we personally, or I personally think the defense won the game for us. Volleyball returned home for two SEC matches this weekend. Competition started Friday with the Tigers taking on Mizzou. Auburn would fall to Mizzou in a close one, 3-2. Auburn looked to redeem themselves at their home court on Sunday against Arkansas. The Razorbacks were able to keep the score tight throughout the game. The girls served up several kills, which put them in place to win. In the final set, the match coach or the match coach Watson challenged Auburn's final point. The point was overturned and the game continued. However, the Tigers put up two points back to back to win the match three, which won the series. This is Auburn's uh, sixth sweep on the season, and the win brings the Tigers to three to one in the SEC, ten to three overall. 
definitely very happy. They're a very good team, and uh, you know, for us to come out, you know, I thought on Friday we were a little bit hesitant. Uh, we've talked about being more aggressive today. Uh, I thought we came out, got them on their heels, and really stuck to our game plan. Volleyball will now hit the road for a two-game road trip. Auburn Equestrian returned to the Plains on Friday for their first home competition on the season. The Tigers squared off against in-state rival Alabama. The Tigers dominated the Tide, finishing the meet with a score of 11 to 1. We had some mistakes that really is just something we're not going to be able to get away with when uh, you know we get later in the season. I always love when we take a win. I always say, make sure you pat yourself on the back. You got to remember these because sometimes it just goes the other way. After the break, we look at other Tiger teams that hit the road this past week. What you missed after this. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. Auburn soccer hit the road again this weekend. The Tigers traveled to Mississippi State on Friday. The Tigers were looking for the fourth straight point in Starkville. And they got it, but not in the way they wanted. Auburn finished in a 0-0 draw with the Bulldogs. The Tigers improved their overall record to 7-1-3 and, and their SEC record to 1-1-2. Cross Country returned to competition this past weekend. The Tigers traveled to Louisville for the Louisville Cross Country Classic. The men's team was able to place 10th while the women's team finished in 13th. Brenda Keegan led the way for the women, finishing in 13th place, while Kevin Wise finished in 45th place for the men. Men's tennis was back on the courts this weekend. The Tigers traveled to Nashville for the Commodore Scramble. Notable performances for singles were Ole Tresterow, Brandon Lobster, Carol Osario, Michael Durham, and Edward Wynn, all telling a win. While in doubles, the teams of Serio and Durham, Lobster and Wynn, and Russian and Trester up, all advanced past round one. The number 17 women's golf wrapped up their play at the Magnolia Invitational on Tuesday. The Tigers finished tied for fourth with Ole Miss taking the victory. Notable individual performances included Michaela Owen finishing in eighth place, while Elena Hualdi finished in 11th place. It was certainly a busy week for Auburn sports. Up next, our sports director, Sarah Pulcheski, breaks down Auburn football. Sarah P's Fast Five after this. Week 5 football is finally firing on all cylinders. I break down the now number 12 Auburn Tigers to give you my Fast Five. Good evening everyone, I'm Sarah Polcheski. Auburn struggled to find their identity early this season, but after their route of missed state, the Tigers are back on track. So let's get started. Number one, Jarrett Stidham. Stidham struggled early this season and it was clear to see, but now, man, he is not afraid to throw the ball. So let's take a look at this touchdown play. Stidham gets the ball and drops back and now he just waits. He goes through his reads and then right here, he steps into the pocket to hit Will Hastings for a 57 yard score. This pass was just one of four deep passes that him through. A good sign for the Auburn offense moving forward. Now to number two, Carrion Johnson. Carrion was a showstopper in week one before he got hurt. Since his return against Mizzou, he has gone on a tear. Let's look at this. Carrion gets the ball and finds the hole immediately and then boom, he puts on his jets and takes off down the field. 
This run would set up his first touchdown where he again finds the hole. Johnson's ability to find the hole and take off is a great thing moving forward for the Auburn offense. He has made the offense more dynamic and it now is a true run threat. Now for number three. I move to the other side of the ball for the Auburn secondary. Auburn's defense has been a force all season, but the secondary was a weak point until week four. And then against Miss State, they solidified my thinking that the Auburn secondary is a no-fly zone. On a critical third down, Fitzgerald rolls out for Miss State to give his receivers some more time, throws it, and Javars Davis steps up to get a hand on the ball, and Trey Matthews sees the tip drill and picks off the ball for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn would pick off Fitzgerald once more, but that time they took it in for the score. Looking forward to Ole Miss, the Rebels are number one in the SEC in pass offense. With the no-fly zone secondary, the Tigers should be able to contain the Rebels much easier this week at the 11 a.m. kickoff. I'm going to jump back to the other side of the ball again for number four, Cameron Petway. Petway was supposed to be the number one back for Auburn, but he struggled in every game he has played this year. Johnson clearly looks to be the number one back, but Coach Gus Malzahn oh, he's a competitor this week. You know, he's a competitor. I mean, uh, you know, he hadn't been 100 percent, you know, uh, any of the games yet. And I know that's been frustrating for him. But, you know, we've got to get him healthy. And uh, if we get him healthy, I think, uh, you know, he'll be in a good spot. Hopefully Gus speaks the truth because if Petway can get back to how we ended last season, Auburn's offense will meet, reach a new level with two dynamic run backs sponsored in with Cam Martin. Finally, number five. With winning comes fun for players and fans. And boy, Auburn's fan base has got the fun. In the beginning of the season, social media was full of doubt, but now it's like a 180. At Molly underscore McCormick tweeted this picture as if God was blessing Tiger fans this past weekend in Jordan-Hare Stadium. At Auburn Football tweeted, no, I won't be afraid as long as you stand. Stand by me with this video on their Twitter account. The Auburn media has even gotten in on the fun. At Rhea underscore Martin tweeted to carry on Johnson about eating pizza. Johnson replied, it was vicious to say the least. For the fans, players, and media, having this type of fun at this point in the season will only strengthen the team morale. And honestly, it shows a bright path moving forward. Well, those are my fast five for this week. To get my five takeaways and five keys to victory, visit our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, on Mondays and Fridays to catch my thoughts. Up next, we take a look at what's going on in the pros. Your national sports update after this. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. NFL just finished up their fourth week of play, and that's also how many teeth Carl Lawson lost this weekend. That means many former Tigers have started to make their mark. Speaking of Carl Lawson, he got his first start for the Cincinnati Bengals this weekend and definitely made his mark in their game against the Cleveland Browns. Other notable Tigers in the NFL this week are Josh Harris. The long snapper was named a captain for the Atlanta Falcons. The former undrafted free agent and the Falcons would go on to lose to the Buffalo Bills. And Jonathan Jones, the defensive back, tallied three tackles for the New England Patriots. The 2016 undrafted free agent and the Patriots would go on to lose to the Carolina Panthers. It's October, which means it's MLB playoff season. Wild card games begin on Tuesday night with the New York Yankees defeating the Minnesota Twins. Here is your 2017 MLB playoff bracket. Make sure you tune in to Fox and their affiliates to catch up on your World Series playoff games. Coming up, we got preview of the Tiger games that will be coming up your way this week. All you need to know after this.
Auburn Sports never takes a week off, and we have everything you need to know to keep up with your favorite Tiger football teams. This week's main event is an early one. Auburn football welcomes Ole Miss to Jordan-Hare Stadium. The game will kick off at 11 a.m. on Saturday, and if you can't get yourself out of bed for this one, you can catch the game on the SEC Network. Volleyball hits the road this week for a two-game road trip. First, the Tigers will travel to Tennessee on Wednesday with a start time of 7 p.m. They will go to Kentucky on Sunday. First serve will be at 1 p.m. The match against Tennessee will be broadcasted on the SEC Network, while the Sunday match will be broadcasted on ESPNU. Soccer has two key SEC matches this week. On Thursday, the Tigers welcome Arkansas to the Auburn, so Auburn Soccer Complex for a 6 p.m. kickoff. The match will be broadcasted on the SEC Network, and play-by-play -play will be on WEGL 91.1 FM. Then on Sunday, Auburn travels to Tuscaloosa to face the Crimson Tide. Kickoff is set for 5 p.m. Equestrian will stay at home this week. The Tigers will welcome Ole Miss to the Plains on Friday. Competition is set to start at 3 p.m. and will be free to all the public. Men's golf is back on the green this weekend. The Tigers will travel to Vestavia Hills on Monday for the Jerry Pate National Tournament. Play will continue through Tuesday. Swimming and diving will be making their first splash of the season. The Tigers will host their orange and blue meet on Friday. The interim squad competition is set to start at 3.30 p.m. Women's tennis will continue to play it out in Malibu at the All-American Championships. Tournament play began last weekend and will continue through October 8th. To stay updated on all the outcomes of all these Tiger games, go to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, or follow us on Twitter, EETV underscore sports. From all of us at Sports Night in Auburn, thank you for joining us this evening. Good night. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis. Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University.